You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We are now entering day number one of jury selection in the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell. And we're here to cover it for you every single day. Audio to be released once the trial begins from the courthouse. And we'll, of course, bring that to you and allow you to listen to the minute-by-minute coverage of the trial once the days are completed and we're allowed to bring that audio to you. In the meantime, we have a reporter on the ground, Lauren Mathias. She's the host of the podcast, True Hidden Crime, along with her husband. And Lauren, you are on the ground there. I'm curious to uh, start uh, getting updates from you every single day on this. Paint the picture for us today How did things begin at that courthouse as the doors opened up for day one of jury selection? Yeah, so the courtroom is closed today for the public because it's jury selection. And so at this time, they're going to not even open up the courtroom, the actual courtroom to anyone in the public. That'll Mm -hmm. come in the following weeks after jury selection. So right now they have everyone in uh, the remote viewing area, which is a large courtroom with a overflow that's open, numerous chairs set up, rows and rows of chairs to see a lot of people. There were empty chairs today. And at the front of, the, of this room is a projector. The projector comes down from the ceiling and there are three different camera angles. They're all wide shots. So there are no close-ups of Lori seeing her facial expressions, but you can see her. You can see her attorney, Jim Archibald. You can see the judge. Um, I did scoot over to get a closer look at everyone so that I could actually see what Lori looked like and her expressions. Uh, But, you know, you had to get really pretty close to the projector uh, to see these three different camera angles. Uh, It was jury selection today. So you could not see the jury on the uh, projector. They kept them private. They referred to them as numbers. It was a lot of, uh, it was like groups. There were three different groups of jury selection they're going through. And during that time, they asked them questions about uh, they asked them questions about understanding um, that if, you know, there are a few interesting things, actually, I want to say yeah. this. Uh, if you didn't know how somebody died, mm-hmm. um, could you still understand that someone is responsible for that death? Uh, do you understand what a conspiracy, is? you know, conspiracy is if you have a group mm-hmm. of people and someone is the bank robber and someone drives the getaway car that they'd still be responsible for this crime? Uh, a lot of questions that hint at the heart of this case. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, give us hints of what's to come. And uh, it, it seemed like there were a decent amount of jurors and some jurors that had never even heard of this case until last week. Which is surprising, but at, at the same time, probably good for this. Uh, what kind of jurors do you feel they're, they're trying to narrow this down to? Ideally, what type of, of individual are they going for? Are they looking for someone that is more understanding of, of the religious practices? Are they looking for people who are not? Are they? Could you get any feel of how they're trying to steer that? Yeah, what they kept emphasizing, of course, was they wanted a fair and impartial jury. I, I mean, I think that's what they all say, <laughs> and, and that is what they emphasize, though, uh, is the prosecution and defense. But, you know, they, the, the, the prosecution or the state kept, kept emphasizing brutal honesty, Mm-hmm. Uh, can you be brutally honest when it comes to um, this case? Can you call things out even if someone doesn't like it? Can you say it for what it is, see it for what it is? As far as religion goes, they actually uh, specifically asked, um, if you don't agree with someone's religious views, can you uh, believe that they, I, I'm paraphrasing here, yeah. I would have to read my I'm live tweeting at, at Hidden True Crime, so I'd have to read the exact tweet. That's like, sure. those are my notes, too, yeah. while I live tweet. So paraphrasing here, don't quote me on it, but sort of, uh, could you could you understand that this is somebody else's religious beliefs in, and still listen and, and uh, base things off of the evidence that we present to you? And, and do you understand that not everything on the Internet is true? That was another question Mm -hmm. that they kept emphasizing uh do you do you will you only use the evidence that we present you so if you have heard of this case before uh you know last week do you understand that some of the things you've heard might not be true and to base your your decision and or a conviction on only the evidence used during this trial 
those were just a few things. I'm curious too. I had saw that uh, Brian Enton uh, had uh, tweeted out. He was surprised by the looks of Lori. Can you expound upon that at all? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I do think they're not giving her as much leeway as they gave her in Fremont County. We're now in Ada County, that's, mm-hmm. you know, Boise. Um, she's been transferred here. Um, she had all black on. She definitely looked uh, less made up, uh, which, you know, she was wearing glasses. And um, as a female, I do wonder, oh, are you wearing glasses because you didn't have enough eye makeup with you? You know, that's, <laughs> sure. that's a great thing to do. You know, we, we have our we have our tricks. And she her hair was down. It was curly. It was not pinned up in any uh, barrette or rubber band. It was it was just completely down and curly. I, you know, she looks simple. She okay. looks simple. Um I, yeah, some people have mentioned that she perhaps looked frumpy. I'm going to be really honest. I got as close to that projector as I could. And all I could really say in, in, in my live tweets was she's wearing all black. But, you know, again, that's another sure. trick. If you don't have nice clothes, if you have frumpy clothes, black's the way to go. You're going to sure. notice as much. So <laughs> all black, glasses, you know, simple. It's Plain. going to be. Uh, it's but going to she be, wasn't in. She wasn't in prison clothes. Sure, and it's going to be interesting that uh, obviously we're not here to judge a fashion show on Lori Vallow, but it, it is going to be interesting how she does try to present herself, basically uh, to the jury uh, as this continues on, because there are so many damning things about her. Uh, she's going to need anything she can grasp at to to give her some sort of look or feel of humanity. Uh, I would think as this continues on, is there uh, as they go through the jury selection process, do they do they announce when they have found a juror that they're they believe is qualified that they're happy with, or how how will this process continue to play out throughout the week? You know, the only thing we're privy to is hearing when they excuse a juror. Okay. When uh, uh, and it's mostly been to undo hardships. There's been there's been a lot of reasons, child care financially someone can't take this amount of time off of work Mm -hmm. um someone else actually stated that they were homeless and they had a temporary place to stay that ends up being 45 minutes from the courthouse Mm -hmm. uh, undue hardships Uh, and so there was a lot of excusing people for those reasons uh but but when you we're not seeing them saying uh okay we want this juror and we want Mm -hmm. this juror um, and again, even if they were, it would be hard to follow. We're not, we can hear their voices. You can tell if it's a male or a female for the most part. Mm-hmm. I'm sure not always, but you know, for the most part, you can kind of tell that. Yeah. And um, they're being called by numbers. Uh, some reporters in there are like specifically writing down the numbers. I, I mean, for me, I, I, I don't even know if I want that information because I, I, I want, you know, the jury selection to be fair and I don't want to even know. Sure. Um, their private information, you know, or have them looked up. But yeah. Um, yeah. we don't know who they're picking as much as we know who they're excusing. Do we know if, I uh, know once the trial gets underway, they are going to be releasing audio of those days' proceedings uh, by paid request uh, through the courthouse, and we're planning on getting that every single day that it's available and then uh, rebroadcasting it here through, uh, through this podcast. Uh, do you know if they're mm-hmm. going to be releasing audio on, on the jury selection, or is that going to be uh, something that only starts once the, the court uh, gets underway in the actual trial proceedings? Yeah, you know, I actually don't have the answer to that, and I'm, I've been wondering the very same thing myself, because yeah. we'll, we'll be also trying to, to get that and see. I, I think they are going to release some audio, but okay. what they release, I think it's going to be, um, and, you know, and it might be what we heard today. Sure. You, you'll hear the, the voices. Um, I don't think that would be necessary, you know, a, a big issue, but you know, someone could recognize a voice. So maybe they'll mm-hmm. be editing out the voices too. You know, sure. they, they do want to keep the jury private, but that's what we're learning right now too, is what are they going to make available during this jury selection week and how long will it last? Exactly. You know, that, we, we don't know. That seems to be the big question. What's the overall like atmosphere and mood there right now? Obviously there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, rightfully so, are looking at this as they finally caught the Wicked Witch. Uh, but uh, is there anything else going on there? Is there any supporters of, of Lori or the Daybells uh, in in the capacity of the area? I saw no family today that I recognized. The majority of people I saw there were reporters mm-hmm. or podcasters. Uh, there were a couple of people that introduced themselves to me that were public. 
but um, even they were there perhaps to help some, you know, friends out or fellow podcasters. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was definitely like more of a media group today. Um, So, you know, some communication specialists, but John Pryor, Chad Daybell's attorney uh, came in and he was present in and out. Uh, You know, he's from Ada County. He practices in Ada County. And so he could, I, I, you know, he didn't need to necessarily be there. He, mm-hmm. You know, I think he was observing, but he could have been perhaps working at the courthouse. I'm not completely sure, but he was, he was in and out throughout mm-hmm. the day, uh, chit chatting with media, uh, which was a little interesting to me. Um, and you know, there were times when you could hear him. Um, so everyone was kind of eavesdropping on purpose or on accident, but that, that was an interesting part. And I think all of us were just maybe a little bit, you know, first, it's like the first day of class, you know, we're all <laughs> sure. there. We're all new. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know protocol. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're all learning. We're all <laughs> meeting each other. I think the, um, the, the mood was more so, uh, you know, what do we expect? How do we act? What's expected of us? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, new students in a classroom, sure. uh, you know, and, and again, I didn't see any family today. Let me ask you one more question. And it's not necessarily about the jury, but I know you on your podcast, Hidden True Crime, uh, you had a very deep heart-to-heart conversation with Larry and Kay Woodcock uh, not that long ago, and I know that there's questions as of last week as to whether or not they'll be admitted into the courtroom uh, once this trial does get underway. Have you heard any new developments in that area of things? Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything, and honestly, I thought it was going to be the first thing we might hear today. Mm-hmm. And I even overheard, you know, John Pryor kind of mentioning that that was odd before before the trial even began today day one of the trial when he was in kind of the talking to reporters and it was loud enough that you couldn't help but hear he sort of brought that up and and then i started to naturally think this might be the first thing we hear today mm-hmm. is uh judge boyce's decision on this matter and uh it went straight to jury selection and and i kept checking the court website to mm-hmm. see uh, what we might see there. And, and I, I haven't seen anything yet. Day one of school. We'll see how it continues to go. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Lauren Mathias, host of the podcast Hidden True Crime. Please do check that out. She's our on-the-ground correspondent for the trial of Lori Daybell. We'll be talking to her Every single day, getting updates as this begins to play out. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss any of our breaking updates and discussions on this case and the many others we're following for you right here. You can get a commercial-free experience through Apple Podcasts right now. Follow me on Twitter, at TonyBPod, for updates on this case and much more. Stay with us.